guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fangirls, and ooh, boy, do I have a book review for you today. Today, it's been so long since I've told you guys I've had a book review, but this book is something that I just can't not review. This book I have been waiting for for two years. So, for people who probably haven't been around my channel and don't know about this book, this book that I've been waiting for for two whole years. Well, let me tell you a little story. Back in the day, there was this little book <laughs> called An Ember in the Ashes. And I, at first, just read it because it sounded interesting. I never thought I would like it as much as I did. I did, and this book is topping in... And then now, this book has topped... Probably one of my favorite book series. It is just on par with my vampire cat, my love for vampire academy, guys. So, for those of you who don't know, the third book in the Ember of the Ashes series finally came out after two years of waiting, of waiting. And that book we are reviewing today. It is this one lovely book. This is one. Lovely book called A Reaper at the Gates by Sabata here. As you could see, I read it on audiobook first because my nearest bookstore is an hour and a half away. So audiobooks saved my life right now, basically. So I was working. It took me four days because I would read this at work. At work, and I uh, did little by little on my days off this week. So it took me four days. Probably would have taken me two if it was just I read it at work. At work, and it was one of those weeks where I worked constantly. Constantly, but I still say four days is uh, an impressive amount of time to finish a book. Even if it's just an audiobook. Warning, this audiobook is about 16 hours long. It's a long one, and I will be getting a physical copy of Reaper of the Gates no matter how much I hate the fucking cover, because I don't like these new covers. I liked the old covers. The old covers were so much more beautiful than these new covers. These new covers just remind me about... of every single fantasy book there is out there. There's nothing really special to them anymore, and that's what really gets to me. A lot, but moving on from my thoughts on the book cover, because we'll get th to that later. Later. I can't really go into a synopsis on this one, because it is the third book out of a four-book series. Series next year, we're getting our last book in this series, and oh my god, I am not prepared for what... It's gonna happen because, oh my god, that ending. We'll talk about that ending. That ending was just, oh my god. Oh my god, so I can't really say much about Snobson except this is the third book in the Ember of the Ashes series. And, uh, a specific character has got, has now lost a lot of my respect. A lot of people who probably read this book probably feel the same way, but then again, I thought there was a lot more people who liked my favorite character, and turns out, not a lot of people like my favorite character, and that's okay, because I'm entitled to who I like, you guys are entitled to who you like. For instance, I really can't stand Lya. Lya, my personal opinion, I don't really like her at first. First, the first book, I thought she was, and the second book, I was kind of like... Oh, just do something, and then the third book, the third book, she gained a lot of respect for me. I love the two uh, women in this book. If you can don't know who my favorite character is, it's definitely Helene. Helene is, like, my OG favorite character. The series would not be a lot to me, personally, if Helene wasn't in here. Here, I know there's a lot of people who bash Helene. But she has went through about as much as Lya has. Has been through uh, probably even worse considering uh, where she's been raised. And there's a lot of hate for Helene. Helene or Helene or whatever you want to call her. 
I call her Helene. There's a lot of hate for her, and I just don't get the hate train. I get that she's a cold person. I get that she works for the Empire. I get that she is the enemy. She's like an anti-hero in my mind. She's not the worst person in this book. She's certainly not the best person, but she is so, so complex of a character that I just can't hate her. Hate her, guys. I just, I can't hate Helene because I get where she's coming from. From, she is so loyal to, to the place where she was raised. She was brought up thinking that, kind of like how Laia can separate herself from who she is. Helene can't really separate herself or who she is. And there is this one bang, I'm sorry, that is just annoying me. Me, so I don't really get the Helene hate. Like, if you hate Helene, you might as well hate Laia, too, because, well, uh, Helene is, well, Laia is more the emotional type, Helene is more the, well, it's kind of like emotional versus logical. Like, Helene is logical side. I think she likes to look at things from a logical viewpoint, well, Laia is more emotional, and I don't think you could have one without the other. And then Elias is just in the middle, and got Elias in this book. Mm, we'll talk about him in a minute. I do not like Elias in this book. Spoiler alert. I did not like Elias. Elias, on top of that, spoiler warning, I'm about to get into some heavy spoilers. Spoilers, I'm not really doing a character analysis in this one because I feel like my character analysis make up half the video. Video, but we'll get into that. So, as far as my rating goes for Rebirth of the Gates, I give it 9 out of 10 stars. It would have probably been 10 out of 10 stars if it hadn't been for, like, I'm gonna put this out there. I hate <laughs> the relationship between Lia and Elias. I cannot physically stand Lia and Elias as a couple. Couple. I don't really think they work together. Together. I know a lot of people think, oh my god, Lia and Elias are so cute. I think their romance actually ruins this book, which is why it got ranked out a star for me. Every scene they had together that was romantically involved is in this book, I wanted to puke. I don't know what it was. I think the romance takes away so much out of this book. This book, because to me, it makes no sense. I know it's not really my relationship to make sense out of, but I don't know. I just, in a book, I, I, it's not that it's a in a book of war, you can't have love there, but as the... The Jin say in this book, love cannot live here, and it's just like, it makes sense. <laughs> sense so much in this book because Laia and Elias' love story, I just, I don't ship it. I don't ship it. I don't really ship any character. Like, it's like, oh, you're probably just saying this because you ship Helene and, Helene and Elias together. Actually, at first I did, and then Elias turned into such a selfish ass jerk. <laughs> Jerk, which we'll get to in a minute. We'll get to the Elias hate. Oh my god. God, I'm probably biased because I love Helene. Helene, Helene. I'm gonna switch in between names. I'm sorry. I love her to death. To death. And I hated how Elias treated her in this book. Oh my god, if there isn't, like, a word of apology between Elias and Helene coming from his mouth. I mean, from his mouth. Oh, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> pissed. So, um, 9 out of 10 stars. This is your final warning. If you don't want to get spoiled, like really spoiled, I suggest you leave now. Come back when you've read Reaper at the Gates. And if you haven't gotten to an Ember in the Ashes series, series which includes an Ember in the Ashes, a Torch Against the Night, and a Reaper of the Gates, I suggest you do. It's an amazing series, even though I do not like Laia and Elias as a couple. As a couple, I do see why some people would like them. It's just not my thing. My thing. I think there is only one ship in this whole book that I actually respect. 
and love a lot. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in the things I liked about this book. But stick around if you want to know who uh, my favorite ship in this book is. Okay, so uh, bye to the non-spoilery people who don't want to get spoiled for this book because I'm about to get heavy into spoilers. Spoilers, so let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start off with the negatives. Oh my god, guys. I am so fucking pissed at one character because he never got better in this book. I hated him from the start of this book. Oh my god. So, we're gonna get real. We're gonna get heavy. If, for people who like Elias, I... Uh, did like Elias, but my god, I could not stand Elias in this book. If that was the one thing I hated in this book was Elias. Elias, and I'm gonna tell you why. Why here in a minute. Okay, so Elias. Let's get started with uh, the things that he did that made me not like him. That made me actually truly not like his character. Character. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. I feel like, yeah, he was justified about being mad at Helene for kidnapping... What was that one girl's name? Name, it was from his mother's tr Well, he's, she's more of a mother to him than freaking Karis is. Oh my god, Karis, I hate Karis. But she, like, Helene kidnaps and tortures someone from the tribe where Elias grew up grew up in and while it wasn't like the best moment that Helene has ever been you gotta I gotta I feel for Helene so bad in this book just like so bad this girl cannot catch a fucking break whatsoever of any book book I think her the first book that she had was like the best thing, the best, uh, book for her, personally, but my god, okay, so, one reason why I lost a lot of respect for Elias in this book, okay, I get it, this woman helped raise you, raise you, and Elaine shouldn't have done what she did, she apologized, she said she was sorry, she was big, and she told you that she was wrong, was wrong, but, you know, like, at first, he, he sees this chick who has raised him, who has helped raise him with his, uh, sort of kind of foster mother, I would call her adopted mother, she, he sees her, her, she's tied up, tied up, uh, not, she, like, Lane has had Dex beat up. This woman, I get why uh, <laughs> he was pissed about that. This is going to be a very controversial opinion. I know a lot of people are going to not like my opinion in this one. But, oh, ooh, the moment that, like, uh, Helene is getting ready to kill or injure Lyle. Uh, she would pro she's probably probably wanting to kill her ass at that point point and after what Helene has just been through um that's the thing with Helene I can't hate her because she had her, her whole entire family just died <laughs> just died got executed straight in front of her her because she helped Lia and Elias again <laughs> again it just seems like Helene gets screwed over every time she helps Lia and Elias in any way, shape, or form. It's just, uh, <laughs> like, God, uh, it makes me mad. <laughs> mad. And then uh, Elias acts cold towards Helene, not because she had just beat up his, his family, but because she threatened Lia, okay? Like, I get it. You love Lia, I get it. 
so much, bro. But you should have turned cold towards her the very first moment you saw her. Her being the shit out of, like, not, you didn't see her being the shit out of her, but the very first moment you had noticed, you noticed that uh, one of your mother's tribe members were there. You should have been cold to her then. Not when she was about to hurt Lyo, but then. Like, if Elias had acted colder towards her sooner, I would have got it. Got it, but oh my god, the moment he turns cold to her is the second that Lya is in danger, and I just, I get it, but at the same time, priorities, bro, priorities, Lya could handle herself, you, you'll you make Lya seem like a damn soul in distress every fucking book, and I hate it, okay, Lya could take care of herself, even though there are some points where Lya cannot take care of herself, herself, and then, you know, whenever Helene actually apologizes, Later in the book, and they're in this dreamscape, and fucking Helene is dying in Eliza's arms because she just got stabbed by one of Karis's minions. Like, she get like, Helene fucking almost dies in this book, okay? She almost dies, and here's Elias giving a shit, more of a shit about Lya than his own fucking best friend, okay? Like... Oh my god, I would never, like, ever want to be friends of Elias, because if you're friends of Elias, you're fucking screwed. Screwed, okay. He doesn't give a shit about anyone except Lya, or himself. It's just, it's irritating. At least with Lya, she cares about her people, she cares about her family. Her family. Elias has dedication towards people. Towards people, but it's not as like constructive as Lia's is, and cause people are gonna be like, "Oh, Sarah, what about whenever he saved all those villagers?" That's the one instance in this book that I actually liked Elias is when he had a shred of humanity. But when it comes to Helene, I don't see why these two are friends, honestly, because. Elias will always pick Lia over Helene. I never get what Helene sees in Elias. Elias, I think Elias is one of the most frustrating love interests because it's obvious who he's going to choose in the end. It's obvious that's going to be Lia. Lia, like, the sentiment of, like, that's another thing that annoyed me, okay? So, Elaine's dying and Elias is, tr even Elias thinks that he has to get her to safety, he has to. But then he just, like, simply tells her, you're the blood strike, you're stronger than this, you could do this, you know, just giving her a little tiny pep dog. And then, guess who he goes to? He goes to fucking Lia again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm I'm not trying to be heated. Seriously, this is not, Lia and Elias are not my most hated ship ever, but oh god, does it enrage me, arrange Array? Uh, array? Uh, I don't know <laughs> what I'm saying. It infuriates me that Elias almost never puts anyone except Lya first. First. And Lya <laughs> could let Elias go for the good of her own people. Because Lya isn't self selfish like Lya. She never really gains anything from helping people. People, I know, people are going to be like, oh, Elias isn't that selfish, and Elaine is also selfish, and yeah, there's a lot of selfish moments in this book, there's a lot of people being selfish, but my god, is Elias fucking annoying, and the one moment, the one, like, even Shaver's all like, you have to, you're bound to this place, you have to start taking it seriously, he doesn't want to take it seriously, what? Why? Because it has nothing to do with him. He thinks that he could just, you know, brush, take a brush of death and not give a shit about his responsibilities. And I know at the end of the book, he literally does a 180 and takes his responsibilities seriously. But my god, did Elias infuriate me so much during this book. 
this book. He didn't take his responsibilities seriously. He fucked up in a lot of different ways. I know the two girls have fucked up a lot, too. Too, but, you know, Elias is what started this. If he had done what Shaver had asked of him, him, I knew it wouldn't have mattered in the long run, but at the same time, it's kind of like... You have to do this. It's not an option. And then he treats it like it's an option throughout all the book, even though he wouldn't be alive if it hadn't been for the waiting place. And the waiting place almost fucking falls apart because he's not taking it seriously. Shaver fucking dies because, of course, he's not taking his responsibility seriously. It's kind of like Elias. Stop thinking about your motherfucking self and think about other people. People and gradually through this book, I respected Elias a little bit more, but I lost a lot of respect for him in this book, and I don't even care if I get hate for the fact that I hate Elias at the moment. It's just how I am. I am. It, it's like, oh god, whenever Lyo, Lyo who barely knows Helene, could have more grace than you do when it comes to your best friend. You know you fucked up. <laughs> you know you fucked up. Cause that's like we'll get to the parts that I like about this book in a moment because lot the things Lia says I love them to death. Especially her interactions with Helene, I love them to death. To death. It seems like Lia cares more about Elaine than fucking Elias does, and Elias is supposed to be her best friend. Like, what? <laughs> like, ugh. Another thing I didn't like about this book, we're gonna just put, like, all the villains. Karis, the Nightbringer, and Marcus. Marcus is just, mmm. Marcus is violent for the sake of being violent. He, like, crushes Livia's bones just to get a point across to Elaine. Elaine, and it's just, oh my god, I've never hated a character so much. I am so glad that he died in this book. So glad. It, that's another thing. It's not that I didn't like this. It just really disappointed me that his death was so humane. I get that we can't always have the revenge that suited. Sometimes being humane and kind is the way to go through it. Through it, I'm glad that Elaine is the one who got to do it. Do it, because I swear if it was fucking Elias or Lia that killed Marcus, I would be in more array. Eh, I can't say it. More uh, pissed off than I am right now because Elaine deserves to kill Marcus. He killed her whole entire family, pretty much enslaved her sister. And married her just to make a fucking point. Point. It was so weird that Marcus actually, you know, at first I thought after like the child, like his kid was born, as soon as Livia was pregnant, pregnant, and uh, he's holding a baby. I for a split second literally thought he was gonna kill his own heir right there and then, but he doesn't, which, you know, if he did, did I mean, like, what was the point of protecting the heir during all this book? This book, but, you know, whatever, uh, Karis and her manipulation through this book, book, one thing I did like about this book is I didn't see anything coming, I saw a couple things coming, but... Not, uh, you know, Karis' plan. I didn't see the Nightbringer's plan, too. I saw a little bit of his plan. Plan, which we'll get to in a minute, because, oh my god. God, did that scene hurt a lot. A lot. But, the like, one of the major pet peeves I have about this book is Lia and Elias' relationship like, my god, I, like, I agree with a lot of people saying that the romance between Lia and Elias ruins this book. Because it does, I just, I don't get it, and whenever Elias turned Lia away, I was, like, so glad because, you know, we have bigger and more important things to deal with than Lia and Elias' love story. I've been here, I, I know I'm gonna say it, 
be contradictive in some points, and please bear with me there, but I just not, I don't like this love story, I really don't. Don't. I get the opposites attract, and they both care deeply about people, but I would soon rather ship Helene and Lyra together, and these two people hate each other. Each other, but, you know, that ending, though, I do like, like those two to get as friends, friends or allies at the moment. Like, I'm excited to see that. Things I loved about this book, let's stray away from the negative because I could talk about how much uh, Elias annoyed the living shit out of me in this book. This book, like, bro. Sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do. Do, but let's move on. Okay, things I loved about this book. Obviously, Helene. I feel like Helene's point of view saved this book again. Kind of like a torch against the night. I felt myself being rather bored with Lyon and Elias' point of view sometimes. And every single time I got to Elaine's chapter, I was like, oh my god, it's Elaine's chapter. Thank god, yes, I love Elaine so much. I love her dedication to her sister. Sister, she's so... I love her uh, wittiness. I love a lot of things about... Elaine, I just like, ugh. And her parts were so good. The war, she was in the middle of the war. I, Elaine is just a badass to me. I love badass woman. Woman, if I wanted my daughter to look up to someone, it would be Helene because she has sacrificed so much. And I literally don't get the hate for her. I really don't. Don't because, uh, let's see. First book. Look, she knew what was going to become of her if she let Elias and Elias go. Go, and she let them go because Elias is her best friend. And then Elias is like, I'll come back for you, but guess who never comes back for her? Her, of course, Elias. Because, you know, he's like the best friend ever, right? But <laughs> in the second book, she gets pretty much tortured because of what happened with Elias and Elias. She... Loses her family via execution. Her sister is enslaved to Marcus and pregnant with his baby in this. This she almost loses Livia in this book, but because she's poisoned, she poisoned. Like she almost loses Livia twi twice. Once when she was poisoned, and two when ever. Uh, she was in childbirth, and not to mention all the times she literally had to see her sister's physical abuse because she couldn't challenge her emperor. It was infuriating. But she really has this lo sense of loyalty and dedication, and I just can't hate her <laughs> for that. Like, she's very in control of her feelings. She wants to kill Marcus, and in the end, she succeeds and she does kill Marcus, but she has to, re she realizes that she just can't jump into a situation without thinking about it first, which is one thing that frustrates me about Lion and Elias, because they literally just think of their emotions, they don't really think logically, like Elaine does, and that's probably why Elaine gets a lot of hate, because she just doesn't jump forth into emotion. Emotion, she's very uh, emotionally inept. Inept, and a lot of characters like that don't really get a lot of love. But Helene, I love her so much. So much, and I really do feel bad for her. One ce scene I loved in this book was Laya talking to Helene about, and telling her that she was sorry that she gets the pain that she's feeling because she's lost her family too. Too. And I love that scene because it was after Elias was so un like unpassionate about uh, her family dying, which you can tell me, oh, well, he didn't know about it, Sarah. He didn't know that Elaine's family had died, but, and I was thinking about that. I was thinking, thinking, oh, well, maybe uh, he didn't know that her family died. 
died. Maybe he just thinks he's being ruthless to be ruthless. Ruthless and just being a mask to be a mask. But it literally says in the next chapter that he knew that her family had died. And he doesn't get that she's acting in a place of emotion. Because Livia, her sister, is the only fucking thing she has left. Left. She doesn't care about your love interest, bro. She cares about the one person that could keep her from going absolutely completely numb to everything. Livia is her only flesh and blood that's left besides her nephew. Her nephew, and it's just, it's infuriating to me that he just doesn't get that. <laughs> Get that, but Laia does. Laia gets it, and it's weird. Weird that someone who has known Helene for so long would not get it, but Laia, who barely knows her, does get it. get a lot more than he does because I guess Elias has never had to lose someone he actually cared about. Cared about because he doesn't have that pain yet. He doesn't. Have the I watch someone I care about die except Shaver, which he really awfully didn't care about anyway, because how long has he known Shaver? Shaver, a couple months to this point? Like, I feel like he had so much more emotion towards Shaver than he did with Helene, who was supposed to be his best friend. But enough of the Elias hate. I feel like I shouldn't title this video I hate Elias so much because it's the truth. Truth. Another thing I loved about this book is that we find out that Cook is actually Laya's mom. Oh my god. God, I did not see that coming from miles away. I had, I kept wondering what was uh, Cook's role in this. And I love how in the end she sacrifices herself so Laya and Helene could get away and she tells Laya I love you and it just it's so emotional and yeah and Laya just got her back and she dies dies it just ah it's filled with so much emotion guys this book wrecked me <laughs> like so much uh another thing I loved about this book was the relationship between Helene and Harper Oh my god, Harper is like the best part of this book. I love him to death. I love how Harper is the one thing besides Olivia that could get Helene in touch of her emotion. Emotions. I love that scene at the end after uh, Helene has ripped off her mask to give to the Nightbringer. Bringer, I love how he was so compassionate towards her. And says, says you're beautiful, how could you ever not be? And it's just, like, Helene is so insecure, no matter how confident she may act. She's insecure in herself. And coming from a person who acts strong on the outside, a lot of people don't know have insecurity issues. That line in that book reminded me of me and my husband. Has been because Elaine, Elaine can be cold at times. She can be really cold. Cold, but it's because it's been beaten out of into her since the age of birth, okay? Okay, she has to be cold because of her circumstances and how she was raised. But it's just, it was so good. Good, I love that scene. I love their little, uh... Scenes, scenes, that kiss scene, though, whenever they finally kissed after so long of waiting for that kiss, because I actually stayed in the last book talk that I had two years ago that I like, I ship Harper and Helene, because I think that Harper is so much better for her than Elias is, is what makes me sad, is that whenever Helene is in the streets, dying... <laughs> dying, it's Harper who comes to her, and she thinks it's Elias, and she tells him, I know you would never leave me, I know you couldn't leave me alone, but it's not Elias, it's Harper <laughs> that she's talking to, and to think that her best friend would abandon her like that, like, makes me so irritated. <laughs> 
just so much. Uh, another thing I loved about this book is the ending whenever uh, Lia and Helene agree to team up because li they, like the marshals need people to help defeat Karis and the Nightbringer, and Lia is all like, like, I have all this steel, but I can't do anything about it if I don't know how to use it, and they have to train with each other now, now to help. It was just, it was so great, and I can't wait for the uh, Lia and Helene scenes, because I think they are the most powerful dynamic of this book. This book because they are so alike, but they are so different at the same time, and it's great to see their interactions with each other. Like I think the best parts of this book were Helene and Elias interactions with each other, each other because these are two strong female characters. Like I used to hate Lia a lot, a lot. She used to be my least favorite character, and now Elias, Elias, I don't really like like that much. I just want a power dynamic between Lia and Helene. I want them to work out their differences of each other and work together and we can leave the love story out in the fourth book, guys, because this love story does not matter. Matter because this book is so good about it. Just so good. Good. I liked Livia in this book. Livia was great. Great. The scenes of Marcus are very well done, even though no matter how much I want to fucking punch Marcus in the face, they're done pretty well. Well, I like how well constructed this book is. Sabata here is like the best at constructing your books. I like the war in this book too. Too. I like what it came to. Like, ugh. <laughs> Even the Nightbringer. Nightbringer in this book, I hate him, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I like that he. In the end, he kind of had to help Elaine because she had the thing he needed and he, she had to be alive to willingly give up her mess, which we'll get to in a minute because it'll probably be in the saddest scenes, scenes category. So, um, God, there were just so much in this book, just so much I want to talk about, but like so much I can't remember at the same time. Time, like, there was a section, like, this whole section in the middle that I was just bored to tears with. I don't really like the strategizing, but whenever they get, it got past all the strategizing, it was good. And that makes sense. I like Moose. Moose is a good character. Character status scenes. Oh my god. When Laya's mom. When Laya finds her mom only to have lose her again. Because she sacrifices herself. That was sad. Shaver dying was sad. Sad. Elias losing himself just so to bind himself himself to the other place or whatever it's called. Called made me a little sad even though I don't like Elias as a character right now. I'm very mad at Elias. I might change in the fourth book. But I just feel like he even before he like, uh, gave up his soul to this forest thing? Thing? I felt he, like he was very cold to Helene, even, like, before this. This, it's just, I don't really buy the friendship between these two. I really don't. Don't, because while Helene will always probably sacrifice things for Elias, Elias will never do the same for her, and it infuriates me. To no end, and, ugh. I cr almost cried. Cried. Like, like, ugh. The one scene that made me enraged but sad at the same time was that, that the Nightbringer had to get Helene's master from her, and, uh, Helene's just over here. She's watching her people die. Die. Helene is just, like, the best character. I love when she's all, like, just... Like, she knows she's down, she knows she's fucked, she knows she's screwed. Screwed, she knows she can't win this war against these people. These people, because it's not her destiny to win this war. And she just goes there and she says, just come at me, brother. 
brother, do your worst. And, like, she is so down because all there's no one fighting at her back anymore. She's told everyone to go of her sister to protect her sister. Her sister, she's down, she's out for the count. The last thing that, the last resort she has is to ask help from the Nightbringer. Bring her. And the one thing that Nightbringer asks in exchange for his help is to give him a piece of her soul. And the one thing that the piece of her soul is her mask that has been attached to her because it's her dedication. It's her dedication to her people, to her family, to everything she stands for. And she rips it off her face, causing scars and bleeding. And the blood rushes into her eyes. And the Nightbringer, he just takes it. Takes it. He fools her like he fooled Laia. Laia. But one of my favorite scenes is, like, after that... When Laia sees what happened with Helene, she's not enraged, she's not infuriated. Because, you know, Laia's been through this, she knows how the Nightbringer is. And she rushes to Helene, and she saves Helene, and that's just like, that's such a power dynamic. When you could set aside your personal feelings to help someone. Someone, and I, I love how Laia just says, says, I don't care if her enemies... I don't care if she's a marshal right now. I know I have to save her. Save her. And does Laia have hidden agendas through this book? Yes, she very much does. Just like Helene and Elias have agendas through this book. But she still saves Lane, and it's, like, so awesome. Awesome, and God, I just, like, I love this book so much, and I could spend hours talking about this book. This book to you guys. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about? I feel like there are so many things I need to talk about in this book, but they're not really coming to me. In this moment, but, yeah. You guys, this is probably a good book. Oh, God, we had to talk about that ending. Okay, so the ending, you know. The ending was good. Good. Mark is dying, though. Though, I felt like I didn't feel satisfied of that death. Usually, for big bads, you have to have a satisfying death. death. But Helene kills him out of mercy because he asked her to. Too, and it's just like, uh, okay, I didn't, like, I respect that choice, and I respected the offer for making that choice, and not having it just be as big and bloody thing. I felt like I felt more emotion towards this death, because it wasn't violent, because it was more of a mercy killing than anything. But I just, I guess I just wanted more for someone who murdered someone's family and beat Livia up. Up. And the thing about Helene is she wants to heal people. She, like, she kills, but she also wants to heal. And Helene is just such a complex character, and I love her so much. Laia, Laia earned a lot of my respect in this book. But Elias didn't really earn a lot of respect, but I guess that's the fourth one. And then the Nightbringer at the end, and he frees all his gin. And we find out that his name actually means Beloved, which is somewhere in the book. The book. There's something about Beloved in the book, and it frustrates me because I don't remember it that much. Much, but I know the ghost that Elias is talking to is his grandmother, but that ghost, if I remember correctly in the beginning, Renna was the one true love of the Nightbringer. <laughs> Bringer, and he, she might be his uh, doom. In the end, and then the thing, the stuff with Karis, we figure out. That she killed a bunch of people who killed Elias's fa- and, uh... Avatosis- Avatosis? I'll just call him Harper because his first name is kind of one of those mouthfuls. She, we find out she killed people because they killed him. Killed him. And she has their names tattooed 
of her press is a badge of honor. But I don't get it. How could she persuade people so fast? I guess we'll find that in the... Out in the next book. Because that's definitely gonna happen in the next book. Is killing Karis because no one fucking likes Karis. Karis. I just like... This book series is so good. And the final book better be the best. Obviously, Zbada here doesn't care about killing people off. Up or doing the harsh scenes. Scenes, I feel like if this book was a tearjerker, which it is, it was so hard to get through and so realistic that I can't even... I feel like the fourth book is just going to be too much for me. Like, oh my god, I wanted my hands, now I wanted my possession. But if I have to wait another two years for it, my god, am I going to be annoyed? <laughs> annoyed because I just need it now. So, I don't actually have predictions for the next book. It's totally going in a direction. What I want to see is Lya and Helene totally go, screw you, Elias. Elias, we don't need you to help us with our mission. But I do want to see Elias come back to himself a little bit. A little bit. I know he's a soul catcher now, and that's his mindset. Said, but my god, I just, I don't know. Like... I don't want the Lion and Elias love story, I really don't. Don't. If you guys don't know who my favorite ship couple is, it is definitely Harper and Helene. They're just so cute together. I love them so much. I love how Harper brings out the softer side of Elaine and the whole, whole getting undressed in front of him scene. Classic. I love it. Love it. They're definitely, like, two of my precious little babies. Babies, and this is a love story that I actually can get behind with these two because unlike Lia and Elias that will sacrifice everything for their love, love until like later on in this book, obviously. Obviously, Helene and Harper sacrifice their love for the good of their people. People, which is what I want Lia and Elias to do, but they're gonna need one more book to probably do it. They're probably still going to end up together. I really don't care at this point. I can give less of two shits about this love story. I just want to know how this book ends because this is like a good book. But this is the first book I've ever liked because of the story story and not the love story. Like the love story is a really important part of the book. I love love stories, but I also love that a when a book can intrigue me, not by its love story, but by its actual story. It's why Vampire Academy is one of my all-time favorite books, because not only does it have a compelling love story in it, it also has a compelling story. Story and characters, and this book definitely ranks around the same as Vampire Academy. Academy, but I don't like the love story in it, it's weird. But, okay... So there you guys have it. That was my review at a re but on a Reaper at the Gates. Gates, one question I have for you guys, because I really didn't get who the Reaper that like you know how it's like an ember in the ashes. It was either a liar or Elias, I can't remember. Who it was in the torch against the night was Elaine. Who was the Reaper at the Gates? Was it the Nightbringer? I can't remember. Cause they my lies my life because they always mention it somewhere in the book and I don't feel like they mentioned it anywhere in this book. This book. Also the return to Quinn, Eliza's grandfather. I loved it so much. So much. That was the one instance I really liked Elias in was whenever he told Elaine to go seek out his grandfather. Grandfather. It's like, hey, one moment when you actually act like her friend. But I feel like this is it's like a mini rant against Elias. Elias and I'll warn people a mini rant beforehand. But I don't know. What do you guys think is going to happen in the next book? Comment down below. Let me know and I will see you guys in my next video.